So, a few minutes passed. Um, so, yeah, t we're going to be concentrating on the assignment three, pretty much uh, today and um, um, Thursday. So, hopefully, everybody's here is uh, um, accepted the assignment, and looked at it at least, started working on it. Um, you know, you won't, you will want to give yourself some time. Um, so, yeah, if you haven't started on it yet, um, I encourage you right after this class to go off, go over there and uh, uh, get it uh, accepted and uh, start doing some work on it. So, um, so yeah, my plan is um, um, we're going to look at, I'll just jump in, I think. We're going to look at um, um, the notebook today on polynomial regression, uh, 6-1. Um, so I'll go over that. Uh, basically, I mean, the stuff in 6.1 six, and 6.2 on polynomial regression and on regularization is the heart of your assignment three. So you'll need to kind of understand this stuff in order to uh, understand the assignment. Um, I don't know if uh, the, I, I was going to mention for you guys that are here that I did modify the procedure on the assignment a little bit. Um, I can talk about that if some people need some help on it. And we're still using tests. Uh, you still have to write the stuff in the function in, in a function, uh, and then in order, and then it gets imported when you run the notebook and the tests get run. I don't exactly like that. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm still experimenting, trying to find some alternative methods. Um, it'd be nice if you didn't have to write stuff outside of the notebook. If you could just do the stuff in the notebook, and it would actually run the tests in there. I did change the the, the tests. So I know, I don't think they're quite as informative as using the doc tests. There are other reasons, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, let me know what you guys think. Uh, so when you run those, it might not be quite as easy if you're failing uh, the test for the assignment three to figure out why. So you might have to actually go in and uh, look at the, um, uh, the, the test and the expected results and kind of compare it by hand. So. Um, if I get a chance, maybe I'll bring that up and, and uh, look at that a little bit more specifically. So, um, but uh, but uh, before I that, let's let's look at the um, polynomial regression. So I, I think it's important that we maybe get through uh, both of these notebooks today and on Thursday uh, to make sure everybody knows um, uh, is, is familiar with kind of what we're doing on this assignment three. So. Before I jump into that, though, um, I want to go back um, and talk about one part uh, on the notebook from last week on linear regression. Uh, so at the very end of the first one, uh, there was an example. We, we um, uh, so let, let me just walk through it a bit. We create a model, uh, a, uh, well, actually, we, we uh, create some data where we have a line that has an intercept of four and a slope of three here, okay? So the reason why I want to step through this is because basically we're doing the same thing on the assignment too, but we're doing it with some data that's uh, um, um, nonlinear. So, so we're, we're, you've got a, a polynomial that's generating, but we're doing it the same way. So it's useful to understand this part um, uh, if you don't remember it from the notebook, right? So we've got, um, um, this is really the, the true function, but we add some noise onto it, okay? So, so we've got a line that has um, an intercept of four and slope of three, um, and we generate some, some x points at random, but we also add some noise. So this is going to add in some, some noise with a, a, um, a standard deviation of one um, by default here. All right, the random n gives noise with a normal distribution. That's what the end at the end of rand means here. So the, the effect is, is, is we get this, right? So this is the, the point, uh, and we want to try and fit a line to it, right? So remember, the true function has a slope, has an intercept of 4 and a slope of 3, right? So we get this example. We, we fit um, a, a line using the normal equation. So this is really just by hand doing the normal equation. Um, and um, I, I guess I did talk a little bit about this last week. Uh, and, and an example then used also using polyfit. So if you want to use polyfit, you specify that I've got uh, a polynomial of degree one, which is basically a line. And again, you get for, for all of these, uh, we should have got exactly the same results, although some of them the, the slope is first and some of them the intercept is first, right? 
Uh, with this amount of noise, though, uh, the, the point I want to make today is, you know, you should notice how much, how far off the parameters are, right? So we should have ended up with uh, four for one and three for the other, right? Um, um, uh, and we, when we fit to this data here that we had with some random noise on there, we're getting uh, just 3.55 and 3.27 um, for all these methods. Also, also using linear regression from scikit-learn. So this is a, a good uh, thing to understand in general. So this is the in the real world you wouldn't know what the true function is that's generating the data that you're trying to fit. You would only have the data with noise. It's typical to have a lot of noise in your data, right? So you can never really know what is true, what what, what is reality. You can only try and fit a model and try to do your best to uh, get as close as possible, right? So here, for all these methods, when you look at the model that was fit, you know, the, the, the true function was the dotted line. So that was the one with the intercept of 4, slope of 3, and we were getting this model with an uh, intercept of 3.5 um, and a slope of um, um, 3.2 or whatever, right? Um, and the point of this here is uh, this, this gives you kind of a good idea in general uh, when you're trying to, to do um, supervised learning to fit a model to some, side, some sort of set, set of data, whether you're doing regression or classification, right? So here we're doing the same thing, but we're, uh, so the, the true model is always intercept of four, slope of three, but we keep sampling, we, we keep generating uh, another set of 100 points uh, with noise on them. So a different 100 points that, that we sample um, and have a different noise, right? So this is showing what we, we ran this uh, 100 times. Um, um, where each time we generated, uh, where we sampled 100 points with some noise from the data set, right? So, so what the plot was here was all these gray lines of the 100 times that we ran it, right? So we had 100 different fits. The, the true model, the, 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 the reality was the red line here. That, that was the true uh, intercept of 4 and slope of 3, right? But you'll get a bunch of different, slightly different fits, right? And that's what you're, for, when you're really fitting data, uh, really fitting a model to some sort of data, that's what you're doing. You, you never know what the true relationship is, what, what reality is. You will only ever know, this is my model, um, and we can do um, some statistical kinds of things. So if you make some assumptions about that your noise is normally distributed, so for all these we're using noise that's normally distributed, um, um, so if you make some assumptions about that, you can uh, uh, have some idea of of how close your model probably is to reality. So you can you can come up with uh, confidence intervals. Uh, we end up with something similar to this. I think I discussed that. So this ends up being kind of similar to the confidence intervals that you would get um, like if you use uh, Seaborn, uh, where it, it plots like a 95% confidence interval for you. All, it, it's slightly different because in this case, we know what, what the real you know, what reality is, and what we're getting is a sampling of the variation of the models that we would get, that would get fit to that line. Right? So you can see how much they can vary, right? So sometimes you can get lucky, so a lot of these models are, are pretty close, you might not see them, but sometimes you can get some that are quite a bit off, right? The slopes above or below uh, three here. All right, um, so right, keep that in mind. I mean, this, this is really what we're doing for assignment three, except instead of, uh, of a model that's linear, we're gonna, you're going to be trying to fit uh, to a, a model that's nonlinear, that, that's more complex than this uh, on, on the assignment three. Right? And you won't know what the true model is. You'll only be able to try and estimate it by fitting a regression uh, to the data. Um, okay. So let me, 
Um, some of these cells might take a little bit of time, uh, so I don't know if it's a good idea for me to rerun these or not. Uh, we'll see. So I, there might be some stuff that I want to do here. So let, let's jump in. Um, so uh, last week we were only f fitting uh, a linear model. So we're, we were fitting, like, like the polyfit showed, uh, we were fitting um, a degree one polynomial. So you can think of, of a line as a polynomial of degree one, right? So the general form, you know, this, this is reviewing, uh, hopefully reviewing some stuff that you've maybe seen somewhere. But uh, the, when I say a polynomial, I mean something of this form. So we have um, uh, um, x0 times x to the power of 0 plus x1 times x to the power of 1 plus x2 times x to the power of 2 plus uh, xn times x to the power of n. Lots of x's there, hopefully. Uh, I'm not confusing, but, but that's the general form of polynomial. When it's degree 1, so y is equal to something of that form. When it's degree 1, you know, you've only got the, the intersect and stuff. So x to the 0 is just 1. Right? So you really only got the, the intersect and the slope. But we can talk about a polynomial in degree two as a quadratic, uh, or a cubic, or higher. Right? So here we've got a, a quadratic polynomial. Uh, and so our x to the two is one half, x to the one is three fourths, and x to the zero is three here um, in this one that we're showing. Right? So, um, so yeah, for the assignment three, you've got something like this, although it's, it's higher uh, degree. So um, the, the secret function that generates the data you have to fit for assignment three is like probably degree seven or six or something like that. Right. Um, but yeah, we can't really visualize something higher than, uh, oh no, that's not true. So, so in this case, uh, we're only plotting uh, different values of x, but uh, we're doing nonlinear combinations of x. So that's what a polynomial does. All right, so uh, when we do it here, so again, like, like I was showing before, uh, we're, uh, we can generate like a sample of data with some noise uh, from there, right? Um, so this might be more useful. So since it's a quadratic, it's going to be some sort of a parabola, right? So if we're just concentrating on the range from negative 3 to 3, the true... Uh, quadratic, the true parabola is the red line here, um, and the points that we sampled um, are the scatter plot, um, right? So these are basically generated from the same function, but with some no some noise added that has a, uh, in this case, what we were doing, um, uh, some noise with. Um, actually still with a standard deviation of one. We're just um, 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 I'm sorry, yeah, right here is where we add in the noise. So, uh, oh, with the standard deviation of about a half. So by multiplying by 0.5, we make the noise uh, less than, than a standard deviation of one uh, here. So. Um, okay. So um, the, the, the point being is that uh, we can use the same method, um, the, the root mean squared error uh, and the linear regression, to fit a polynomial. It works exactly the same way. Um, uh, um, so, you know, if you're looking at, if, if you just have the, 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 the data points that you sampled, um, it probably should look to you that a line isn't going to be a very good fit, right? I mean, you could fit a line to that, but, but it looks kind of curvy if you're just looking at the, the blue scatter uh, uh, plot uh, points here. Right? So, um, of course, if you don't know what the true degree of the function is, you're only guessing at what, what you know, I'm try, I try and fit a degree two polynomial or should it be even higher, right? Um, um, but here, yeah, if you decided that, that a degree two polynomial is a good fit, uh, we could use polyfit directly. That's that's really what polyfit does. Is um, given uh, the data that we want to fit a line to. So we're doing supervised learning to fit a polynomial of some degree, right? Um, and it's going to return back the, the the estimate of the best fitting. 
parameters. So this should be the, um, so remember our true line was this. So this is x2, x1, and x0 from my notation here. So we should have had 1 half, 3 fourths, and 3. Um, um, so yeah, it goes from x0, x1 to x2 from what you get back from probably, oh yeah, I had it here. Or, so you might see, um, uh, if you did this the first time in like high school or something, you might have seen it as ax squared plus bx plus c instead of um, x2, x1, x0 here. So um, anyway, yeah, we get, we, get, um, we get a, so 1 half, 3 fourths, and 3. Uh, and again, though, these are the best fit. So uh, we're, we're still using the, the, mean, the root mean squared error uh, as our error function. So, you know, we, we put these points in uh, like, like we talked about for gradient descent uh, or for the normal equation. Um, that's our fitness function. Uh, and these are, in some sense, the, the, the best line. The, these are the ones that minimize the root mean squared error for the data points that we got with noise in here, right? So you'll never get exactly um, the, the parameters, but you should get something close, depending on how noisy, more or less noisy it is, right? So um, um, since we know what the true model is, right, we can, we can visually compare that. So that's what we're doing here. Um, and you'll do a little bit of that on assignment three. Uh, well, actually on assignment, uh, three that you're working on, you don't, you'll never know the true model until next week. I'll tell you what the true parameters are, so later on you'll be able to do stuff like this if you're interested. Um, but yeah, in this case, for that noise, for this noisy data, you know, our true function was this, uh, and, you know, it's a pretty good fit. Right? Uh, and, uh, I think I am going to try to rerun the notebook, so... Um, so if, if your data is noisier, you expect to get more variation in your fit. So you'll get less good fits, right? So if, I have, if my noise is twice as big, um, and we rerun it, uh, you'll see that the model is not quite um, as good, right? So you'll get quite a bit of, of a bigger uh, difference. Uh, each time you run that, right? And if it's even noisier, it'll be even worse, right? So, um, so if we make it two standard deviations for our noise, you know, it's beginning to look like if you just saw that, you might not have any idea whether, you know, it's quadratic or maybe it's linear with something, with some, um, um, some outliers over there at the low end or something like that. Right. Uh, but yeah, given that, uh, actually, yeah, one, 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 and so bad. So it's still visually not too bad, uh, even though we had quite a bit more noise in there. Right. Okay. So uh, to summarize that, uh, before I go to the next thing, uh, you should make sure that you understand, you know, what's happened here, right? So. Everything that you should have learned last week by going over the previous notebooks, we're doing the same thing here. We are using a cost function or a fitness function, um, and uh, we're, we're doing uh, supervised learning for a set of data that we pass in here. Uh, so, but we're doing it uh, for a degree two polynomial instead of a degree one. Instead of fitting a line, we're fitting a quadratic. Here. But it works exactly the same way. We can calculate the cost function exactly like we did before. Um, and so these should be the values that minimize the root mean squared error um, uh, when we're fitting this polynomial regression uh, to our set of data. Okay? And you can see it, it kind of works, right? I mean, we get pretty close. Uh, you'll never get exactly the parameters back if you have noise, but you should expect something uh, in the neighborhood. So let me go back to, um, let's use the... 0 0.5 standard deviation. So I, re I rerun these cells here. Not quite so noisy. All right. Um, 
Okay, so we already covered that. Um, so, so this is kind of just the extending this. You can extend this to any degree polynomial um, and still use the same cost function, the, the root mean square, to fit a polynomial to set a data. Um, Oh, so um, here we're going to show how to do this using scikit-learn. Okay, so scikit-learn doesn't have um, a function where you say, you know, fit a polynomial. Um, but, um, so this is what we're going to be using a lot in the assignment. So instead, we can transform uh, our original data to add in polynomial features. Okay, so this is a little bit like... Uh, the, another thing that we'll be talking about in this class. So if you're given a set of data, sometimes I can't really fit a good model to it, so I have to do what's known as some feature engineering. So I might need to create some new features to add into my data, which are combinations of the existing features. Um, or you know, we, we did some of this um, in the the end-to-end the -end example chapter. So we added in uh, some features which were combinations of, of existing ones. Right? So when we use this polynomial features, um, you can think of that as, as kind of doing the same thing. We're going to add in um, some new features that are the, the, just the square or the cube or higher powers of the original features. Right? So um, anyway, I mean, you know, what polynomial features does from scikit-learn is straightforward. So, um, uh, and, and we can do it by hand, right? So if I just, if, if I originally have, um, um, uh, so this is really the first five uh, points from this data set we're plotting here. So um, at uh, 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 well, th these are just uh, the, the x positions uh, at different places: two point eight, point four three, and so on. Right. Um, but um, so we can just square those, right? So so we could use um, uh, vectorized numpy's vectorized feature to um, uh, take the square of each one of those. Right? So, so really this is just the, um, the, the square, so it's close to three, so you get something uh, about approaching nine. Right? Um, okay, well, so hopefully that's not mysterious, right? So uh, that's really all that polynomial features is doing, although um, um, it also does combinations of things. Um, I'm probably jumping ahead here. I think we'll have an example of that. So, but that, the the simplest is if we ask for polynomial features to give me all of the degree two uh, features of an original set of data, um, and we do like a fit transform on again originally the x only the the shape of x was um, uh, um, uh, we have it here. So we had to reshape it into a. Um, um, into a column, a two-dimensional column matrix with one column. Um, that, that was what we did here in order for the, the fit transform to work as expected for scikit-learn. So once we, once we uh, do that for our polynomial features though, now we've got something that has um, 100 samples but now two columns. And the second column is just the square. It's just each feature squared uh, in this data, right? So nothing mysterious going on here. That's all polynomial features does. Um, but, um, so we can just use the straightforward linear regression because it's going to use the root mean squared error cost function, but we can feed it in um, our uh, um, x uh, that now has the original features and the square of the features in order to fit a degree two polynomial to the data. And this will do exactly the same thing so these values I had here should be exactly the same ones that Polyfit gave me um, when I ask it to fit a degree two polynomial. But notice, so since we have two features, uh, now the way that linear regression works in scikit-learn is you know, we get the intercept term and then we get the, uh, the, 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 the terms for the two features, uh, what I'm calling x1 and x2 here. Are these, right? So this should be the three-fourths and the one-half, uh, and this was the intercept of three. And given my current set of noise, hopefully those should exactly match what we got from Polyfit uh, that we had up above here, uh, these values right here. So, for example, looking at 3.09 for the, uh, the, uh, the, the x0 term or the, the, the intercept 
um, or the uh, the uh, dummy feature term um, is what we got again here, right? Um, all right, so everybody follow me, right? So, you know, uh, we, we've done something, you know, kind of uh, that, that you might not realize you could do, right? So we're, we're using a function that applies it can only do linear regression. But by engineering, by sending, by sending in the, the, the squares and the features, we're actually able to use the same cost function to fit a polynomial using the, the linear regression function um, uh, from scikit-learn. Um, so, oh, here um, I think what I just fit uh, the original, just the the un uh, the, the 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 set of data with only one feature instead of having the square of the features. Um, so this would be the best line that would fit to that data, um, and this would be the best line according to polyfit that fits from that data. So we should again, I guess the point we're trying to drive home here is you know we're using the same cost function. They're both using basically. The, the root mean squared error cost function, like we talked about last week, um, to find the parameters that minimize that error uh, for this set of data that we're fitting. Um, so, um, yeah, one final point on this. We don't Uh, we're not really going to be using this in our assignment three, but if you have a set of data um, that has two features, right? So we had, uh, let's just call it A and B. Uh, what polynomial features does that would be a little bit tougher to do by hand is it actually, it actually creates all uh, degree two combination, or actually degree three combinations of features in this example. So since I originally had AB, we're going to get AB, but we're going to get A squared, B squared, um, and we're going to get A cubed and B cubed, but we're also going to get A times B, um, um, A squared times B, A times B squared, and so on, right? So there's, there's many combinations of degree three uh, when I have two features, more than three, right? It's not just uh, A squared and A cubed and B squared and B cubed. It's also all the, the combinations of A and B. Anyway, that, that, that's what all the, the columns are that you get. So, so you know, this should correspond to my original uh, A and B, um, and then you know, this should be the, the, the square of A, and then uh, A times B, and so on. Okay. So, you know, uh, uh, like I said, we won't really be using that for assignment three, but you can. Uh, if you suspect that uh, you know higher level combinations, higher powers of your features uh, will make a better model, you can use polynomial features like this to to try all different combinations up to some degree to see if that you know basically what this allows you to do is to fit a nonlinear model to a set of data using the root mean squared error cost. The only problem with this is that, right, you don't know, so what degree should you go up to? What, what would be a good power um, of, uh, of polynomial features that might give up uh, the best model possible? Um, okay, so good enough. So, so that's one thing. Um, so let's move on to the next thing. So Another thing you have to do a lot of on assignment three uh, is use these learning curves. Okay, so, um, so let's talk a little bit about what those are, um, uh, what they're used for. So, um, some of these might take a little bit of time for me. Uh, um, so, using the, I think we're still using the same function we were using before. So, we're using uh, 1 half x squared plus 3 fourths x plus 3 with um, some noise added in, um, um, and we'll fit in, uh, we'll, we'll fit a polynomial regression, so we'll fit um, where we uh, create the, um, 
uh, features up to the square. Uh, but also, uh, yeah, so th this is, we're going to be doing this on assignment three. Uh, if you don't know that it's a degree two polynomial, you know, uh, we could try different degrees. So maybe it's a, a cubic or to the, the fourth power or something. Uh, so you get even ridiculous, even more ridiculous. So we can fit up to like a degree 300 polynomial. Right? So, so in this case, we've got a degree two polynomial that we're going to fit. Um, um, so, and then we're going to try to fit uh, something all the way up to the 300th degree. Right? All the powers from one squared cubed up to the 300th power. Right? So, you know, you should be able to predict, right? So since there was only one original feature, I should have 300 features uh, when, I, when I fit a polynomial of degree 300. Or 301, 300. So, so yeah, I've got the original... Uh, x, and then I've got x squared, x cubed, up to x to the 300th power. Um, so I've got 300 columns now um, in this set of data. Okay, um, okay so the, the, this is an important point here. So this is our first um, where uh, I'm going to, uh, we've brought this up before, the idea of overfitting versus underfitting versus, you know, the Goldilocks kind of problem. Am I, am I overfit or am I underfit or am I just right on my model? I kind of think of it as like a Goldilocks problem. Um, so remember the, the true uh, function um, is a degree two polynomial, right? And, and we're plotting uh, our data. We're actually plotting a, a line. So the one, the, the red line is the, uh, uh, the best li linear fit to that set of data that was generated using a quadratic a power to the two. Uh, and the blue one is the, the best fitting degree two line. Um, and the green one was the degree 300 line, okay? So the, the first thing w is um, that maybe you should recognize from this figure uh, is that if your model is too powerful, you are definitely gonna overfit. Uh, and that is what's going to be happening here because remember, you know, the, the real function is degree two, but the, the degree 300 polynomial, the, the best fitting line wiggles around and tries to go through as many points as possible, right? So it's going to definitely have a lot lower of an error because it gets closer uh, to uh, these, these points than the other two models, a lot of these points, right? So it's, you'd expect its root, root mean squared error to be a lot smaller uh, on this data, but is that a better model than you know the the degree two model that we have here? So that's the question. You can think about that, right? So, so I mean, is, is this going to be a better model? Um, and as a hint on that, right? Think about so if I if I have a different set of random data here, uh, is this going to do better or not uh, on predicting data it wasn't trained with? So, so it, it, it probably has a lot smaller uh, an overall mean squared error than these other two on this data that it was fit with. But how's it going to do on, uh, you know, like for example, a point here uh, is going to predict a really large value. You can't even see it up there, right? Uh, so especially these things on the end. Um, So um, what we're working up to here is when you're building models like this, you have to have some feel for whether your model is overfitting or underfitting. Um, if it's doing one or the other, you need to, to tweak it, change it, so you get a model that's fitting correctly, uh, fitting uh, properly or adequately for the data that you have. Right? So one way uh, to do that is to use learning curves. There's different ways to generate learning curves. We'll look at one of them uh, in the assignment three. Um, so Um, 
Yeah, so this might have been a bad decision for me because I know some of these might take some time here. So let's look at this one um, and explain what's being done. And uh, yeah, I'd kind of forgotten, um, but but yeah, I mean, one of, the, one of the tasks you do have to do is write the function to plot these learning curves. Um, but what's being plotted here um, is, um, let's, let's look at what we just did here. So um, we fit a simple linear regression. Uh, to our set of data here. Um, uh, uh, so this is a, we're fitting a degree one uh, line to our data. Remember the data is actually quadratic. It was generated with a degree two uh, polynomial with some noise added, right? Um, so notice, oh, and what we do here, um, uh, for this version of plotting the learning curves, uh, what we do is um, um, we've got 10,000 uh, data points that we use here. Uh, but inside of the function, we split it up into, uh, we hold back some for, uh, we called it validation. I think in the assignment three, I changed it. You should be calling it your test data. But um, uh, we hold back like 20% or 30% of the data, uh, and we only train the model with the other uh, 80%. Right? And in fact, what we actually do um, is we start by just training the model with one point of the data that we, we keep for training. And then we evaluate it uh, when, when we train it with one point on the data that we trained with. So that's what the red line is. And then we also uh, um, evaluate its error. So we're, we're plotting the root mean squared error of the model that we fit using just a single point on the data we trained with. So we'd expect the error to be really low. So we train it with one point, it's probably going to fit that point, we have a zero error. That's why the error, the train error starts off really low. But um, for the 20% the, the or the 30% that we held back, we didn't train with, uh, we're evaluating the root mean squared error on all those. And it gets a, gets a high error. Uh, but eventually, so once you train it on a sufficient number of points, like 200 or 400, uh, notice that these, these lines are converging, right? So we're getting about the same error when we evaluate it using the root mean squared error on the data that we train with versus the, the data that we, uh, that we held back, that, that it didn't see for the training. Right, so that's what the validation is. Uh, you sh you sh I changed it on the assignment. You should probably call that the test instead of the validation, but same idea. The data that we held back and we didn't fit the model with um, is the blue line here. So this is one thing that could happen uh, for learning curve. So, you know, uh, so uh, when we're only training with one point, um, uh, we don't do very well in the validation, but when we train with a sufficient number of points, uh, we're seeing convergence for the most part here, right? So we're getting about the same error uh, uh, on the, the data that we train with uh, as we get with the data that we hadn't seen, that we didn't fit the model with, right? And, and so one thing to note for the linear model, that converges somewhere around 0.18, something like that, for this data set, uh, this line here. Um, So anyway, that, that's the first thing. So, you know, if you don't know what the true, true degree of the model is, um, you might want to start uh, uh, with a model that is probably going to be uh, underfitting, right? So you, you kind of know that this model should be underfitting um, because, uh, I mean, we do know what the true degree of the function is that we're trying to fit. It's a degree two polynomial, but in this case, we, we fit just a degree one model, right? So uh, an underfitting model, uh, it should still converge. So eventually, once you have enough points, um, 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 if I go back to here, is that uh, the, you know, even if I have some other points I didn't train with, I'm still going to get a fairly similar uh, error um, on the data points I trained with versus the, the, some unseen points, the, the, the test data that I held back that I, that I didn't see, right? 
but is that the best model? I mean, you know, you should know. I'm, I'm prompting, I keep hitting that, but, but that shouldn't be the best model, right? Because I, we know that we should be able to do better if we have a higher powered model, because we really used a degree two polynomial to generate this data. Right? So something that that's better fitting the the true nature of the underlying reality should be able to lower that that error. Here. So just to jump, uh, hopefully I discussed this, but just to jump to the conclusion on this, if you have a model that's underfitting, what you expect is they should converge. You should get about the same error on, on the data you train with as the data that you have never seen before. But they should be converging at a level that's not as good as you can get, right? Um, so so you, should, you, you should know that a good model, you should be able to get better than a root mean squared error of 0.18 this data set, if I have a, have a better model, one that's closer in degree to the one I'm trying to figure. Um, all right, uh, and you guys should be using pipelines. I didn't use that in the first example here. When we fit this, we just fit directly. Uh, but um, um, I don't know if, if, yeah, we talked about pipelines before from uh, from previous chapter. So these, these just make it very, so since everything in scikit-learn um, uh, you can do is fit transformers, the input to a fit transformer should itself be the same uh, kind of thing, you know, like, like your data set. So you can feed that output after you transform it into the next fit transformer, uh, and that's really what a pipeline is. It's just a sequence where you're expecting the same kind of thing as input and output, and I can sequentially uh, transform them, right? So for all the things for assignment three, uh, you should be using uh, really just a pipeline where you first feed it into a polynomial features to transform it from a degree one uh, into a, a set of, in this case, a degree 100. So a set of 100 features with all the powers from one to 100. And then you take the result of that um, and we're gonna feed it into a linear regression um, in order to fit uh, the best model um, uh, using the root mean squared error cost function. Right. So, um, so this example here, once it completes um, um, uh, doing the learning curves, um, is that uh, you should expect that this should be an overfitting model. So we showed a degree 300 before. This is still pretty overfit. So it should be similar to the degree 300 we showed. So it will wiggle around a lot. It will try to go through every possible point that you ask it to fit its data to. Um, so, um, I mean, if you haven't looked at this notebook yet uh, while we're waiting for this, this might have been a, bit, a poor decision here, but so what would you expect for the learning curves? Right, so uh, you, you know, um, uh, if you think about it, it should be doing well. It should do well on the data you fit it with, right? In fact, you should expect it to get better, you know, lower error, lower cost on the data you fit it with. Um, but what do you think it's going to do on the um, um, on data that you've never seen before, right? So, so when you look on data you didn't train with on the the, the test and validation data. Uh, it'll be points like this, but but different set of points, right? So especially like points here, here, uh, like maybe here, um, it's going to generate lots of errors um, on the validation of the test data. So the errors will be much bigger, right? So we're we done yet? We're still going. Um, So, yeah, so it might have been a mistake to do this. So what we'll see when this finishes uh, for an overfit model, uh, what you should expect is non-convergence, right? So if we're plotting the root mean squared of error, um, you will see that you get pretty low data. I should have my blue and red. I don't forget another marker here. Um, so we were using red for data that we train with, 
right? So today when we fit train width uh, will be something similar to what we had for the underfit model um, at some level. So it'll keep doing well on that. Finally done here. All right, but the uh, the overfit model um, it won't converge, or it might take a long time to converge. Right, so it does look like it finally converges here, um, but um, it took uh, until we had almost a thousand data points before it converged. And I think on your assignment, you'll find usually uh, it, it never converges at all over the whole. Um, you know, when, when you uh, um, uh, when you create the learning curve and, and do it for all of the, the points that you hold back for, that you set back for the training with, right? So, um, I mean, you know, what do we mean by a long time to converge? I mean, that's a little bit of an art, you know? So, you know, if you're not familiar with this, you might think, well, it did converge, so maybe the model's not overfitting. But, um, I don't know, uh, but, I mean, you should know that, that, yeah, I mean, this really is a, a too powerful model, so it really is overfitting, right? Um, so, so yeah, our blue line may never converge, or it takes a long time to convert for the, the, the task of the validation. But one important thing of the overfit model, this is the thing, this is the reason why you might want to get an over, a model that you know is overfitting, because even though um, it doesn't, it's not going to be ultimately a good model. It's not going to do well at generalizing to predict data it wasn't trained with. But the, the level that it uh, reaches with the, the data that it, it's trained with, that it fits on, a good model can probably approach that both for the validation and the training data relatively quickly, right? So what this model tells me is um, a good model should be performing, if I look back here, better than 0.18 on the root mean squared error that the underfit model got. In fact, it should be able to get approach something like 0.1 for the root mean squared error. Um, and both the validation of the training data should approach that and it should converge much faster than that. Right? So those are all the things that you can tell uh, from the underfit and the overfit plot of of a model like this. Right? So if you have a model that you suspect, suspect is overfitting, um, it's not going to converge, or it's going to take a long time to converge, uh, but the level that it can, that the, um, uh, the, the, the data that you train with reaches is probably a good target that gives you an idea of where you want to try to get your good model to be performing at, at an overall root mean square error of about 0.1 in this case. So we know the degree two polynomial should be the right fit. So that has the right power for the data that we generated, right? So uh, we, you, you, you wouldn't be able to get better than a, a degree two model um, uh, for this data set, right? Um, so since it's only degree two, that's a little bit faster, right? So notice uh, what happens here. You might not get quite as clean of a result uh, for your assignment three because your model isn't degree two, it's like degree seven or eight or something, right? But this is, this is indicative, again, it's converging relatively quickly compared to the previous one. Um, so both the, the, the test and the validation, or sorry, the, the, the test and the train uh, are about the point one level within only using a hundred or so of the points to train with. But unlike the underfit model, they converge at a much lower root mean square error, relatively. So 0.1 instead of 0.18. All right. And again, you know, it takes some getting some familiarity with doing stuff like this, right? Um, um, you know, is that a big difference or not? It is in this case. Um, you know, going from 0 0.18, 0 0.19 down to 0.1. Uh, is going to give you much better performance, right? So, so a linear model is just never going to generalize as well as uh, a degree two a quadratic uh, model here. Right. 
Okay. Uh, actually, yeah. Um, I got through a second. I might take the whole time on this notebook. Um, the, 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 just to finish up on this one, the textbook throws these terms at you at the, the middle, uh, at the end of this uh, section on polynomial regression, uh, bias versus uh, variance. Um, so these are just uh, uh, different names for the concepts that we've been talking about here. So bias is really the, the generalization error. Um, so uh, the way I think about bias is, um, again, if I can go back to, to this figure here, uh, a linear model is going to be biased to making linear predictions. So it, it's, it's going to uh, be bad. At, it's going to be worse at generalizing than a, a model that's less biased uh, or, or that's more correct. If that makes sense, right? So, so we're going to end up with less bias for a model that's the correct power for the data that we're trying to fit it to here. And we're going to have more inherent bias, more error that's built in because of the, the linear nature of the model, trying to predict a degree two uh, polynomial here. Um, versus variance, um, uh, this, is, this is talking about overfitting. So, so bias um, is really kind of the underfitting part, right? So uh, you have high bias if I'm underfitting and you have low bias if I have a correct fit. Um, if I'm overfitting, I'm going to have a high variance. So this is the part of the generalization error because I'm, I'm overfitting the data. I'm, I'm being too sensitive to, to noise instead of being sensitive to the actual uh, function that's driving, um, the, 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 that's creating my data. So again, when I think about that, I always have this picture in mind uh, when I'm thinking of variance, right? So if I have high variance, I'm wiggling around a lot. I'm, I'm, I've got a model that's too powerful. It overfits, so uh, it, 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 uh, since it's too powerful, it can try and get through every point that you give it uh, when you're trying to fit the model to it. Um, so you end up with getting low um, um, error um, on the data you fit with, but it's gonna be bad at predicting data it hasn't seen before. It's gonna, it's gonna make really bad errors for data that's just a little bit off from what it was fit with uh, when you have high variance. And when you have low variance, you know, your model is good. Um, um, it's um, not wiggling too much. It, it's, it's not reacting to the noise in your model. It's, it's fitting the actual um, um, function that, you, uh, that, that generated the data. Um, okay, so let's see, still got uh, 15 minutes or so. Um, let me know if people have questions. This is kind of the, the main part of the assignment three. This is, um, um, uh, you're, you're basically doing this. And then the, 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 the other part of the assignment three, though, is instead of, um, trying to get a model that's a good fit by changing the degree, we're going to use techniques known as regularization to try and figure out, to try and fight overfitting. Okay? But I think I'm going to leave that till next time um, uh, to talk about. Uh, <coughs> um, so um, let me bring up, um, in the time I have left here, oh, uh, and I'll mention, you know, I'm kind of avoiding it. There is a version of the function you have to do for one of the tasks uh, that is in there, but you, but it is, I, I made it a little bit different on the assignment. So so yeah, you won't be able to just copy this code. You will have to make some changes to it to get it to work for the the test that we have for assignment three. But it is pretty similar, right? So the the idea is the same is uh, for the, these learning curves that you have to do the same as what we showed here. So you, you basically have to split the data into a test and a train set. Uh, I think on the assignment you're supposed to use 80% of the data to train with and keep back 20 for this, this testing or this validation. But then you're going to train models using just one point, two points, three points, up to all the points you had for training. Um, and, and evaluate your model on the data you trained with and evaluate the model on 
all of the data you have held back for testing. And that will allow you to plot these kind of learning curves and we'll be able to tell whether uh, your error is converging or not um, um, for the training data and the, the, the data that you held back that you didn't train with. Okay. Um, oops. So let me just for a few minutes. Let me see. Hopefully, I got it. Um. um well. Uh, Let me see if I can bring up assignment three real quickly. Uh, da, da, da. Trying to get started here. I'm mm. um, sorry, give me a second. Yeah, I don't think I started up cleanly for some reason. I should have closed off the, the other one running before I started the new one. Uh, let's try it again. So we can try and start that. I don't want to really bring up my notebook, um, but um, this is actually a solution here. Um, let me uh, just mention, I, I, was, I was talking about this, uh, but let me just show you. So in this version, a slightly different procedure than last time. You do have to put all your stuff into the uh, assignment tasks. So, so your code, instead of having multiple files, uh, just put the, the, uh, each one of the things you're supposed to write uh, that gets tested should go into a function in the assignment tasks. Uh, I've already had some people working on things. Um, if one of your tests is failing, what I suggest, since uh, the one thing that I don't like um, is to reuse a slightly different uh, testing, is uh, it doesn't give you as much information as the doc tests do. So uh, just try this. So, so you might have to go and look at the test by hand. So you have to, to read the, the code a little bit. So for example, if um, you're failing on the underfit model, you might want to find which one you're failing on uh, and then see uh, uh, what it's expecting for different things. right? And, and then uh, what you can do is you can just call the function yourself uh, and get back um, so like we're doing here, we're expecting when you write the task to underfit model, um, it should just return a model. So that's the only thing, right? And then, and then uh, when you, the model that you return for task two, we're expecting that, um, for example, that the degree of the model um, is um, degree two. Uh, we're expecting it to be a pipeline uh, we're expecting that the, um, 
the item, the, the first item, the item at index zero of the pipeline is at one of those polynomial uh, uh, feature items, uh, and then it was fitting at a degree two, and so on. Okay, so so I don't know if that's helping people, but but um, um, uh, yeah, if you are fitting one of these tests, you might have to go in and do a little bit of reading of the code, right? So, um, but that's just as an example. That that's what this this test for your task two is doing. So. Uh, we call your model, we call your function that you're supposed to write, uh, you're, you're supposed to return back just the fitted model, and then we're doing things. Like we're expecting it to be a pipeline. The first item of the pipeline should be polynomial features. Uh, polynomial features should have a degree two. It shouldn't include the bias term, other stuff like that. Right? Uh, we're expecting, uh, unlike for the, the previous assignment, I think for the first task or two, we do expect, we do check that you get the exact same intercept and, and uh, uh, coefficients for the, uh, the, the, the two features in this case. But after that, there's the, um, uh, like when you start doing regularization and things, uh, you won't necessarily be getting exactly the same model. So we, we stop expecting you to have exactly a particular model, a particular set of of parameters and, and you just have to get a model that's within some particular range. So for example, uh, our, our test for like the overfit model, we're just expecting that the uh, coefficient um, um, that you have like 100, so you fit a degree 100 model and that the first coefficient is about 1. And we're expecting that the root mean squared error um, is just like 0.34 to like two decimal places, things like that. Right. Um, okay, and um, I am going to talk about you know the the regularization. So the after you fit the basics, the underfit, the overfit model, you have to try and get a better model by adding regularization. So that's where you have to use the lasso and the ridge. Uh, but I'm, I'll, I'll talk about that on Thursday. So. Um, okay, so yeah, we still have 10 minutes or so, but. Uh